priest there bitterly saying he's paid the price for being an old school Democratic MP. And the fact that this act of terror took place in a church clearly hitting home as well. Absolutely. I mean, this is horrendous, and it's quite often the moderates that are being targeted. Uh, if we look at lawmakers and politicians in general, those representing the people, it's not just in the UK, of course, when you look at the United States, when you look at Germany, when you look at a number of other nations around the world, we've seen lawmakers in various countries come under increased attacks. Uh, they're not alone, by the way. If we look at the whole COVID era, we've seen an increase, particularly on social media, of threats towards politicians, but also journalists and virologists. So it's definitely a profession uh, uh, which also, of course, has an inherent vulnerability. You need to reach out. You need to have public engagement. You need to be on campaign. So we're seeing that almost as a profession or a vocation very much uh, increased under threat in the past year, year and a half. And in the UK, there has been this conversation for five years since Joe Cox, a previous MP, was also killed while she was doing uh, work within her constituency. Uh, even David here, you know, called for more security or raised alarm. There's a fine line between reaching out, isn't there, to the public and people who vote you in, and then also being wary of being too close. Absolutely. I mean, this is uh, unfortunately a danger inherent to the profession. Uh, when you look at sort of the security effort that's being put in after Ms. Cox's murder, um, what happened was authorities in the UK were building on things they already had in place from years ago uh, due to IRA terrorism. Um, they look normally at the environment of the home of lawmakers, uh, the workplace, uh, and then out in the public, if you will, the public domain. And of course, with, with home alarms and other things, the home aspect is being covered. Parliament, of course, they have a special police directorate in London to take care of politicians while they're at work. Um, but then there's the whole public domain. And the UK is not the only one struggling with this. Uh, there's several different aspects to security here that uh, provide extra challenge, one of them being the whole virtual domain the last few years with social media and attacks. And the other component, of course, is that Yes, uh, you need to leave a lot to the politicians themselves, how they behave, what rules they follow, what advice you give them, and whether or not they follow it. So it's a, it's a very complex environment in which to put a security operation in work that can really be effective. Was this a security failure by the British, uh, the British intelligence services or the British police? Uh, because we understand that this man uh, was Somali in origin, but, but a British national. And he seemed to have been able to, to carry out this attack with any, without any sense of warning. No, you certainly can't say that it is simply because we don't know the circumstances yet. Um, as we saw with Norway, sometimes these things sort of come out of left field. Investigation will have to point out whether or not there were any indicators that MI5 or the police or other intelligence services should have detected uh, and whether or not if they detected them, uh, they could make any sense of them as to what might happen or when it might happen or who might be targeted. So it's way too early for that. On the other hand, it does tell you the value of doing that and having a good operation in place. We have had incidents prevented, not just in the UK, but other nations as well over the years, of course, where people were being targeted and that whole apparatus is in place. Uh, right now, I think we're just short on information on the exact circumstances. And I think law enforcement in other countries, particularly counterterrorism authorities right now, are really looking to the United Kingdom to provide this information fairly fast to see were there indicators? Were there particular drivers? Were there things that we in other countries should watch out for, such as some kind of signal that might have come in recent weeks uh, from terrorist leaders to start activating these kinds of attacks? You there in the Netherlands, as you pointed out, across Europe, uh, politicians have been threatened or, or worse. Uh, this is not just limited to the UK particularly with such divisive politics at the moment and also amplified by social media and the frustrations uh, of COVID as well. Do you, do you think that these sorts of incidents could perhaps get worse? 
Yes, I hate to be alarmist, but of course we have seen clearly an increase in at least the level of threats, if not necessarily the level of actual incidents. A recent report, for instance, by a parliamentary committee in Germany uh, showed that over the year 2020, there was an increase, a total of, I think, about 1,500 threats against German politicians. And uh, it was roughly evenly divided between unknown right wing and left wing. And we've seen in several countries now, the US being a notable example worldwide, where actual incidents of plotting are being detected, actual incidents take place. Um, so clearly, uh, particularly because of COVID, the right wing extremist threat has increased, but also the threat against scientists or those who believe in it. And of course, a lot of politicians stand for particular policies here. So they're being attacked because of their stance. Um, yes, the increase in threat level is pretty clear. Whether or not you know that's going to translate into more incidents over this in the coming years, necessarily, let's hope not. Uh, but it's certainly a concern. And of course, here in the UK, this is a whole new concern, if you will, because the question here is whether or not this person was radicalized and whether or not there was indeed a, a jihadi agenda behind the attack. Uh, in which case we're, we're looking at the concern that other people might see this as an example and something to emulate. Uh, that's a good point you make. Thanks so much. Always great to get uh, your analysis. Glenn Schoon, appreciate it.